Oh, sure fogged in real quick. It's like, boom. Big bubble window, look at that. See how big it, big it is to scale. Oh yeah, there she goes. Woo -hoo -hoo. Okay, first thing in the morning, it's my first tree. A bit wet day today, a bit cloudy. And you see it's a bit of a haze over there, it's just light rain, Hope Valley's got a bit of a light rain drizzle. So it's gonna be a wet one. So this one here is the one I'm gonna have to wedge. It's got uh, ever so slight lean at the top. The top's gonna slight lean that way. And looks like most of the limbs are on the left side too. You can see, eh? Yeah. So. But I don't want it to go that way because it's uh, going to land in a good spot. Um, I, I might break the top if I throw it there. There's a bunch of stumps right there. There's nothing to hold the butt up. And then over there, if I throw it down below that stump, it's going to hit that big boulder down there. And if I throw it this way, I can put it in the high side of this boulder, lay it right in there. And I already shaved down a stump there. At the end of the day, you see I shaved it down. So I kind of want to put it like right there, so it goes a little high, and like that stump is not less likely to break. And then just just above that stump, there's a big rock face right there, which is below that bigger first stump. So I aim it for right in there, and the butt should slide down on top of that log there, and then it should be easy to back.
Hot in this raincoat. Just a light misty drizzle. You get more wet from condensation and sweat and from rain. Well, maybe I'll take the raincoat off with my sweater on. Okay, so this cut undercut was pretty easy. I just had to do a little bit of cleanup. The thing we're gonna do with the next big tree of fall. I'm gonna try and get the camera in a position where you can watch me like, you know, like right now, like somewhere like the cameras right now. So you can see how I'm cutting. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm gonna move this gas can out the way. Put it right there. Nope. Um, let's see if it'll stay right there.
Not the best spot. Um, good enough. Okay. Yeah, that's the problem you wedger. We'll see. Actually, I know it's going to be a wedger, but hopefully it's not going to be a lot of wedging. Oh, there we go. That's better. Uh oh, look at this. Look at this. Yeah, we have some fog coming in. But I can still see through the fog way down the valley and across the other side. And then the clouds above us are pretty high, so it might not be so bad, but this valley goes a long ways. So hopefully it's not a big wall of fog coming in. And we're gonna hike down to the valley bottom. This will not be fun. Well, oh, listen to the radio, see if other guys are concerned. We're at the farthest end, like we're farthest up the valley. Everyone else is down the valley. Oh yeah. Yeah, the pilot. Yeah, the pilot's already concerned about it. Yeah, it's nice and easy with three wedges. Especially when you, uh, 
wedge as you're cutting the back cut so you don't give a chance for the tree to sit back at all. Makes it a lot easier. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, that's our whoo! Huh, I'll have to watch the replay. It looks like... See, I ripped a little bit of the wood off of the edge there, eh? Did I hit that rock? Oh, it doesn't really look like I hit that rock there. Yeah, I hit, I hit the stump, I think. That was probably the stump that I hit. It's a good thing I shaved it down. I probably would have smashed it in pieces. You know, smashed it in half. So it's a good thing I shaved it down. But it landed right where I wanted it to. Yeah. Okay, now I'm cooling down with all that sweat. I'm gonna keep working. <laughs> uh, Oh, put the camera right here. So here's my stump. I'm just tuck a little bit of holding wood over there, so good thing I stopped cutting. Okay, here. Actually, I better fuel up first, because I didn't start in a full tank of gas. Okay, I'll just set the camera here. Uh, I'm going to go fuel up.
and patched and the log didn't drop down, it dropped like out. So I pinched the high side where I was driving around. So just my tip is pinched. Oh well, doesn't seem that bad though. I could probably chop myself out. Yeah, well, I've got the camera here. I'll just take you guys with me. Zoom out again. Oh, I'll take you guys with me here. I don't normally take my axe with me when I buck it. Don't normally get pinched. Pinch this out here. You can see I cut the broken slabs here so that it wouldn't pinch me, but I've pinched pretty good now. And look at this. Shifted that boulder, it was sitting right here. Shifted that boulder down. See, I can move it a bit. I'll try to wedge in it, but I think I'll have to chop myself out. What am I going to do here? Yeah. See, the sawdust gets pinched in between the bar and chain. And sometimes it, that's what holds it up at the very end there. Okay, now it's going to cut my wedges out. Finish this off. I know I'm kind of wasting time. 
set the camera up all the time. But I don't do it every tree. Oh. Those cuts can be kind of tricky because you got to cut the far side and the front side is what's pinching and so it can be kind of tricky. I cut a little V V notch in there, put it close into it. Didn't really do much this time. But look how fast it's clearing up, just like that. See, it's clearing right up. Okay, now what I'll do, I'll uh, This one might be a bit heavy because I couldn't want to puck, every, puck the log in the ground there, so I made it a little longer. Okay, let me just reset the camera again. Uh, let's see if you guys buck this one. There's another one. Okay, so I'm just gonna waste another minute here <laughs> to show you guys Look at that. So the top is buried in the ground. Oh, there's that snag that I fell a little while back. Yeah. Anyway, um, the top's buried in the ground, so I'm not gonna buck it, I'll just rock out. Look at that. Right in between these two stumps, eh? Ho ho ho! My fluke, I wasn't aiming for that. <laughs> I was aiming to dodge that rock there. 
I shouldn't have said that. I should have said, oh yeah, it was on purpose. That was a fluke. I did clip that. I can see now, I did clip that rock right there. So, yeah, anyway. There's that dump up there. Um, look at that fur next. And we're all, all the way up to the line all along here. So I'm gonna be jumping down to that low point right over there next. Uh, after this other fir tree here behind me. Yeah. So see you guys at that tree. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna put it uh, below that stump. Probably gonna hit that butt. That's the one I just bucked. Um, I don't wanna put any higher because I'll hit that stump. Hit that one up there. So I don't wanna put it right here. And this should be an easy one because like, uh, let me think, right, right about there, straight up and down. So it's got a decent lean, good easy lean. And uh, let's see where it's got for uphill lean. Let's see what I got here. Yeah, so it's leaning uphill too. It's leaning, like right there is about level, a straight up and down. So I'm gonna compensate and aim it a little farther down, maybe a little bit because of the uphill lean. Sure, fogged in real quick. Oh, smokes! So I heard it on the radio. Guys are are talking about the fog. Wow, that was fast. I don't think we'll get the day in. It's hitting the treetops right now. Well, let's finish this tree anyway. You can see it move. See it moving? It's coming in fast. Even the big chopper that's below me is uh, is down, I think. Or he's finished a cycle, he's feeling up, which is probably what it is. We'll see if it clears up as fast as it socked in. Came in there. Um, hmm, maybe what I'll do, just for a different angle. Okay, let's try that. Another different angle.
There she goes. <laughs> <coughs> oh. And just like that, it's clearing up again a bit. But look at that, right where I wanted it. Sage right out. Yeah, I think I'll still have to take a log off it. I don't think it'll fly full length. <clears throat> Actually, I know it won't. Just looking at the butt here. Two foot five. That's 29. Hearing lots of chatter on the radio. Huh. All right, I'll go buck that and uh, start moving over there, the far end over there. Look at that. Both fir trees. Look how more orange that one is. That was cut a few days ago. This one, two minutes ago. Yeah, because I left a strip here and I worked around that corner there <clears throat> for a couple days and now I'm back. And then my other partner, he's got his end up. He's building pads again. And uh, so I'm working that way. But I thought I should just show, show that. It's pretty cool, eh? Let's change, change his color like that. Um, yeah. Okay, you see this one here? And there's two trees growing together at the bottom and one's been felled already. I don't know if that was me or my falling partner who did that. Um, so I gotta fold this high one, or you know, the one on the high side here. Uh, looks like it's a bit of uphill lean. And if it's leaning back, I'm just gonna push it with this yellow cedar here because it's leaning that way because it's gonna be awkward to wedge. It's gonna be like, I'm gonna be wedging above my head kind of thing. So. Where's my axe? There it is. Just right down there.
Let's go. <laughs> this one next. Keep the camera rolling, man. Let me just, uh... Okay, I should do it. Rotten inside. Yeah, I think I can buck up that rot. Pretty good piece. We'll go down there, bucket out. Let's walk down this walk log here, be quick and easy. And then, let me think now. What am we do next? I gotta throw this big hemlock. I'm gonna throw it right down, right down. Maybe there or something. Or maybe right on top of that sapling there or something. Oh, excuse me, it's gonna lay. Right in here amongst all these boulders. Okay, let's go get my saw. All right, my gear is right there. Oh. See, that's what I was standing on that giant rock there. <laughs> okay, I'll turn it back on when I get to that tree. Let's go buck this one first. Okay, here we go. Now for this tree here, it's hemlock. I'm leaning right where I want it to go, so that's nice. But I got this big rock right here on the high side. All right, this rock right here. I can't get my power head in there. So I'm gonna cut it in the low side. And uh, I got a real nice easy escape route. So it's no issue. And it's leaning that way pretty good. So what I'll do is I'll Undercut, bore it, leave a strap, and then I'll stand over. Actually, me, what I'll do is I'll stand on the high side, finish the strap, run behind that tree. So that's what I'll do instead. Well, we got another fog bank coming in. We still see across the valley, but it's getting thicker by the minute. No chatter yet in the radio about it, so I don't know if we're going to get the whole day in. It keeps coming and going. Yeah, the 61's still down. Hmm.
I say it's pretty good for left-handed. Good enough. Ah, get this little corner here. A little bit far. Oh. Good enough. You can see I cuts didn't quite line up, but but as long as this cut doesn't go too far, that cut or vice versa, it's fine. So I'll bore it and then I'll move to the high side. So yeah, I wanna put it right down in there. Actually, maybe find a better angle. You won't see anything in the tree goes over. Nope. Okay, let me figure something out here. Yeah, it turned out all right. Oh, pretty good, honeycut's a bit small, but it's all right. Yeah, kind of wanted it a little higher, but oh, it turned out all right. At least that's that boulder over there. It's huge. Yeah, it must be like a 20 foot high boulder. Man, that one's big. Uh, I better put raincoat on now, so, so it can get a little heavier. Big wall of white. I'm in fog land now. 
gonna shut down. I think I can hear some saws in the distance, so maybe around the mountainside. Like it's uh, not like just a solid mountain or a single mountain, it's like a ridge line of mountains, and everyone else is down that way. Very faint, I'm not even sure if it is a chainsaw. But we're shut down. So if we got hurt, no one could, no chopper could get to us. Maybe some other guy's side hill could run over to us, you know, because we all got a Venza, the app of Venza. We all got our maps on there so we can see where we are on the map. So they could get to us. And uh, there's no first aid kit up here. I think there is a first aid kit at another pad, but there's like 15 pads on this whole hillside. And it's like, a, I don't know, miles of farthest pad. So who knows where that one is? Yeah, that's a saw I can hear. Just make out a faint outline. Just barely make a faint outline of the opposite side of the valley over there. Oh yeah, shows it better on screen. I think it's starting to clear up a little bit, but not enough to um, be safe enough to work again. And not only does the chopper have to get to you if you get hurt, because what they'll do, the chopper will go pick up. Because not everyone has a has their um, as a designated first aid, because everyone has their level one ticket first aid. But there's only a couple guys or one guy at least that has a level three, and if anyone gets hurt. Then the chopper goes, picks him up first, flies him over to the guy who gets hurt. Um, but not only that, if you're a long ways away from your helipad and you got to pack a stretcher all the way through like that, this mess right here, or way up, see the pads up the hill? You have to go way up all these, way up the hill through this mess, you know, these thick brush, boulders. You're never going to get to the hospital within an hour. And that's the goal, right? So um, they'll fly a guy out at the end of a long line. But not all chopper companies do it now, to my understanding, because they need a special certification for that. I've, we've never had to do it my whole career. I've never actually had to do it. Oh, was that a bee? It was flying right towards me. From like 20 feet out, I was like, Boom. make it a beeline for me. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. Oh, look at, see, it's getting way better now. So, those guys around the, around the hillside there is probably a lot more open for them. Yeah, so. There is a, another company that specializes on like search and rescue that we can call. And they have like a doctor in the helicopter. And then they have like a winch system, like they winch down a basket and everything. So that's kind of becoming the standard now, which I think is what we're using now. <sighs> yeah, I have to check my ERP. It might eat all the radio channels and everything in the ERP. Uh, ERP is emergency, emergency response plan. I'm gonna have a snack then while I'm waiting. I'm gonna wait for it all clear. Maybe I'll do a weather check with the pilot here, see what he says. Uh, 
broke. At least it's a nice clean break right on that boulder. Went a little higher than I wanted it to. All right, gotta put my rain coat back on. And just like that, we're fogged in again. Here it is clear. Yeah. One tree down and it's fogged in again. Yep. Nope. We're fogged out again. I got my sweater back on now. It's sweater season. I didn't order any more this winter. I still have some left over. Um, yeah, so I have a limited supply. So go to woodboss.ca if you guys want the sweater. It's a bunch of my older videos from, I don't know, like 10, 15 videos back from the spring. And uh, yeah, woodboss.ca still for sale. I'm hoping I don't have to hike down the mountain. Let me just go with this. It's a long ways down. We got a whole another block to go down through. We got a rock ledge we have to scale down. Well, not scale down. We have to walk, hike down. And then through the second cut block that's finished, and then down through some second growth, and then down in the road, and then we'll get picked up at the road down there. It's going to be like a two hour hike, maybe. Um, I don't know. It's quiet. There's not a breath of wind, so this fog's not going anywhere anytime soon. It's gotten really bad now. Like, really thick. You can't see anything. I can just make out the treetops at the bottom of the hawk hawk down there. But luckily, I got some chai tea still. Yeah, it's still warm. Pretty soon it's going to be... Um, Thermos season. From travel mug season to thermos season pretty soon. You know, nice and quiet though. You can just hear the river down in the valley, valley bottom down there. Yeah. Okay, so let's fog back in again. And I just fixed up a new trail. This is a walk log I fell. Although it's getting bright above us, it's uh, still foggy down to the tree chops down there. But above us is getting pretty brighter, but still a big wall of white. So, all... hmm, I was gonna pack my gear down to the pad. And maybe I'll just wait it out a bit more before we hike down, hike down the pad. I mean, I'll, maybe what I'll do is I'll just hike down to where my saw is. And I left my fuel up at the, the stump of this tree I'm walking on right now. That's burning right out. You gotta talk too soon there. just ribbing this out give me something to do with some trail ribbon yeah, that's what I'll do my partner he's higher than me and yeah I think he's he might even be sitting at the upper pad right now it's way up there yeah even more fogged out huh. yeah. yeah it's just one of those days we'll get a part day in We've been working pretty steady for the last month and a half. Yeah, I'll do that. I'm going to rip it out. I got a new lens cover on the screen here. I've already cracked it. <laughs> it's like the third day. So, I've ribboned out my trail. It's not a long trail. There's a blue ribbon. Another one way over there. Just so anyone knew or uh, comes along, they know where to go, or if the faller gets hurt, who's working up there, he gets hurt and uh, Chopper flies in a bunch of other guys to, you know, to go up there and render first aid. They can follow the trail real easy. 
right? And uh, so it's for safety, right? Um, yep, still hasn't gotten any better. <laughs> it's only been a couple minutes since I turned the camera off. It's actually kind of gotten worse. And I do hear some saws going, which I don't think they should be going, but they're like way down around the corner. And I'm hearing the echo. It sounds like they're coming from over there. So I'm hearing their echo. And most, uh, well, more than half. Is, uh, I don't know how many guys are here. There's 15 guys or something. I don't know. I can't remember. But half of them are below me. Lower in elevation. So it's probably fine for them. But we're up. We're actually up pretty high. So we're fogged out. Oh yeah, it's a train of trail. So there you go, there's my trail there. Comes along, goes underneath this log here. See, this is a indicator of defect. This black line here, this ridge. This black looking bark, and you can look at it. I guess it's all rotten and split up in there. So it's garbage, that piece. Um, and some of the comments on my other videos were asking, why do we cut everything down? Because that's what the government says we have to do. Um, it is easier for the helicopter to see the logs uh, that need to be flown out and it's easier in some ways to, for us to fall, to fall everything. Uh, I personally don't agree with it. I've done retention falling where we fall like 30, or we leave 30 to 50% of the timber standing still. And so we leave all the garbage wood uh, and we only fall, we follow the good wood and any other wood that's in the way to get the good wood down. Um, it's like a win-win, right? Because you're, because you fall everything. Well, you're falling trees that are not going to go off, the, not get flown off the mountain. They're just going to sit there and rot. It's a waste. Why fall them? So, I think all heli jobs should be retention. So, I don't know what percentage, thirty to fifty. I don't know. I don't know about that, but because um, you get some blocks where there's like most of the wood's good, but there should be some left. And, uh, you know, for wildlife and you know, it's kind of pointless to, if you can easily avoid a tree that has no value, why do we fall it? Right? So, because I've done quite a bit, well, it's been a few years now since I've done it, but I've done quite a bit of retention. And the reason we did retention that time is because it's near the ocean and they don't want like the public to see that's been logged kind of thing. So it's like a visual. So we leave 50% and the untrained eye, like some random tourist going out kayaking or whatever. They can't even tell it's been logged. And, you know, leaving more trees for wildlife. So, yeah. I mean, some areas where you get like a big ridge or a big draw, you can't leave half fall everything for safety and to get wood down properly. But overall... There should be retention. It just makes sense. It just, I don't know, to me, it's a logical decision. Like, it's just obvious, but as a whole, not, like I say, not everywhere. Some areas you need to cut everything down for safety and whatnot, but yeah. I hope I don't have to hike off the mountain. I really don't have, hope, really hope I don't have to do that. Um, Yeah, look, there's my, I think my partner up at that upper pad there, he might have to hike down to this pad. I don't even know if, I don't even know if the chopper can get up there. But some pilots, some pilots, they've been flying for years, like they're experienced pilots, flying in the logging operations where it's, you know, pretty technical and need to be pretty skilled. And a little bit of fog and they, they get all scared and wimp out and 
And some pilots, man, they, they'll fly through a storm and a blizzard. It doesn't even phase them. And those are the guys you want flying. Like, yeah, you can you can tell pretty quickly. I've been flown with a, you know, a lot of pilots over the years and done lots of heli, so. But then sometimes you don't really know um, the pilot's capabilities until you get into a foggy, uh, really windy situation. Yeah. yeah, I've had some some scenarios where you got to fly down backwards and uh, look behind you. The guy in the back seat has to look behind, and make sure you're not going to hit back into any trees, as you because you're just hovering above the trees, eh? Just going backwards because you can't see anything. If you go out too far away, you, you're doing, you're just in a whiteout. You can't see anything. So yeah, that's kind of fun, but you got to be like I say, you got to be flying with a pilot that's really really good. Yeah, they're. Yeah, you're worth the, the big bucks to get a good pilot for sure. I don't know how much they make, but I'm sure they make more than me. So here's the face. Um, it's done, uh, I think uh, roughly around there. So all this here is done. And then the line shoots up a little bit and then goes side hill. So there's a little pocket over there. And I pack, the reason I packed my saw is because I don't think there's room for two guys up there. Um, and... There's no more room. There's two spots over there, but there's not enough room anymore. So I'm pretty sure I'm going somewhere else tomorrow. Because from one follower there, another follower over there, they could easily get to each other in 10 minutes. I think that's the rules. You can't be more than 10 minute walk apart from your partner. And you can't be any closer, closer than two tree lengths. So from that tree there, that tree, if you fell it this way, it'd probably land there. And then if you had another tree there and you fell it, it'd probably land there. So the closest two followers can work is from there to there for safety. And then the farthest is, well, you can walk a long ways in 10 minutes. Uh, in, this, in this mountainside, you can walk a long ways in 10 minutes. It's just such clean ground. Some areas, it's, the bush is so thick and it's so steep and, and lots of draws and gullies and stuff that you can't really get too far in 10 minutes. So you got to be really strategic in how you work the job. Yeah, so there's my gear. I'll better take my chain off. Let's see if it's cooled down enough now. Oh yeah, it's nice and cold now. Yeah. Five, 592. Sure was a nice saw. But he poked a hole in it. Day three, I think it was. <laughs> day two, day three. Yeah, of course. I got this at... Uh, Walker saw shop in Nanaimo. Um, Donnie Walker hopped it up. And he's actually got a YouTube channel too. Um, I don't know what the name of his YouTube channel off the top of my head. Maybe it's Donnie Walker. I don't know. But he does all my saws and he's very experienced. Knows his stuff. Um, yeah. Um, I better grab the spare bar too while I'm at it. Oh yeah, right there. There's the first aid kit. I forgot it was even here. Okay, that's good to know. And the fire tools. It's a water can. There's no... Usually they have uh, straps on it so you can carry it like a backpack. Uh, just like a big squirt gun, basically. Shovel plasky. It's required by law to have that on the job site. Um, not really practical now, now that we're getting all this rain and cool weather. We don't really need it, but. All right, I guess that's it for today. Just gonna wait for my ride out of here. Okay. Okay, well, I got some time to kill. I'll show you guys where I get my bag. Okay, tripod. Um, Gatorade, finish that off already. Water bottle. I got um, toilet paper, um, extra pressure bandage. I got my first aid kit. This is like above and beyond. I'm not required to have this, but I just have it personally. And so I got this here. I got gloves, uh, various band-aids, um, blood clot stuff in here. 
another pressure bandage. Um, I got this. Oh, oh man. I got this at the pharmacy. What is this now? It's, uh, I don't know, it's a giant band-aid. Gauze. Um, soaker pad. Oh, here it is. There's the uh, blood clot stuff. Got that Canadian tire, actually. Um, some cl cleaning wipes. Uh, and a small triangular bandage. I think I might make a bigger one. I think I'm going to do that. Okay, come on now. There's one handed here. And I also have a uh, pocket mask. Um, where's that pocket mask? There it is. And there, I got a tape dot just to keep it extra waterproof. I had a water bottle and uh, some trail ribbon and danger tree ribbon. If something's too dangerous to fall, then you got to put danger tree ribbon out on it so that the hill crew that comes in after we're done falling knows it's there, it's marked. And then we also mark it in the map and we write up a form and send it to the next phase of operation coming behind us, the hill crew. And then next to a couple wrenches, next to a file handle. I don't normally have a file handle. I don't know why it's in there, but and a couple wedges and and some wrenches, bar wrench. Oh, come on. Oh, so I got paper maps, laminated paper maps. Um Actually, I got a, some of these springs are for the 390, like the handlebar springs. So I got to adapt this parts kit, but I got like, there's some Loctite in there and I got rewind spring and random nuts and bolts and stuff, pull cord. Um, and chains, the used chain. That's hockey stick tape and uh, spare tape. It's an old one. You can tell it's old because it's not orange. Still works though. Um, and this is my file holder, three quarter inch copper pipe. I lost lid, so that's my impromptu lid. Yeah, that's it. And then I got some stuff in my lunch bag. Oh, I got this thing. I've shown it before. A little mirror. And then in here, Q-tips. So when it's raining out and my fingers are all dirty, and I got something in my eye, I can use Q-tips to get usually sawdust out of my eye. Um, uh, radio battery. My hands after I take a dump. My glasses. Um, oh, spark plug. Um, oh, there's my extra pull cord. Long line, or line level, I mean. Always get that mixed up. Lighter, and uh, this has been here for years. Actually, I think I got two in here. Um, it's usually you only have this in the wintertime when you're gonna make a fire. Like when we're fogged out, like right now, and it's like winter, I'd be making a fire right now. It was winter. And extra wrench. I like the T wrench is better, but it's always good to have backup. That's about it. Oh, and I got some knife. I used to have a leather man, but I lost it. So I gotta get another one because it's really handy. Oh, I do have, where'd I see it now? I threw it in here specifically because I don't have a Leatherman. These miniature pliers found it in my garage. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna throw them in there. Cause I, I think it was last week, I had to do something at work and I didn't have a Leatherman. I need a plier or something. That's it. 
yeah. Okay, let's put us all back now. <laughs> I don't want to open the door. I'll get in trouble. My exhaust port's like over a foot in diameter. Now yeah, it must have some pretty big motors in this thing. Engines. Big bubble window. Look at that giant bubble window. Cool, man. Yeah, pretty cool. Look at that. So they don't suck in birds or something. I've never seen that before. Just so you can see how big it, big it is to scale. It's pretty big. Run off of hydraulics. <laughs> 